Mazuki Mohammed voted for the first time in this election. In the past, he, like many of his generation, didn't feel as if there was anyone to vote for. But in Joko Wadodo, he saw someone he could believe in. He wrote this rap that has become the theme song for Jokowi supporters. Ini titik krusial. Uh, aku merasa sudah malas bahwa demokrasi uh, tersandra oleh oligarki gitu. Dan aku pikir uh, rakyat juga sudah banyak yang malas dengan dengan hal itu. Uh, kemudian ya inilah kesempatannya kita kita harus 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 turun uh, berperang melawan uh, para koruptor para maling oligarki. Dan, dan mengembalikan kedaulatan ke tangan rakyat sebagaimana demokrasi seharusnya. Gitu. Jokowi's rival Prabowo Subianto is a member of that elite. He commanded the army's special forces under Suharto's dictatorship. He was fired from the military for kidnapping student activists in the 1990s during the final days of Suharto's rule. Mazuki believes he would have taken Indonesia back to authoritarian rule. Aku nggak mau negara ini dibangun di atas kebohongan demi kebohongan. Harus eh, apa ya? Harus lebih transparan dan dan biar lukanya benar-benar sembuh gitu. Kita bisa memaafkan eh, semuanya, tapi kita tidak boleh melupakan hal-hal itu. Gitu. Prabowo's campaign was largely funded by two of Indonesia's wealthiest men, Prabowo's brother and Golkar Party chairman Abu Riza Bakri. In contrast, for the first time in Indonesia, Jokowi's presidential campaign was mainly funded by a large number of individual donors from across the country. Historian Gunawan Muhammad says he's never seen people so intensely involved in politics. This is one most beautiful moment in Indonesian history. Yeah? You can see how many people are involved. The volunteers are the real heroes not the political party, the people who put their money, their time, their energy into this idea of voting for Jokowi, which is not very very clear idea, but the sentiment is there, which is uh, unusual after so many years of cynicism. If I have to die tomorrow, I'm happy to see this. Jokowi is playing down his election victory and instead calling for national unity after the most divisive election in Indonesia's history. He's delivered his victory speech here on a boat in the middle of Indonesia's harbour. He's told the fishermen to return to fishing, to other people to return to work, that it's time now to forget about the divisions of the elections and to unite as one nation. At Prabowo's camp in central Jakarta, Ibuwani and her family say they're not ready to do that. Prabowo claims there was massive structural and systematic cheating during the election. But for the first time, the Election Commission made all the vote tally forms from the thousands of polling stations publicly available on their official website. Wandi Tutarung works as a consultant in Jakarta's financial district. During his free time, he's been one of the hundreds of volunteers monitoring the vote. There is no black box anymore. It is transparent. And this is a very good initiative. I think transparency is in, in, in government is very important. And as a result, a man who was raised in a bamboo shack in a riverbank slum is now president of one of the world's largest democracies. 
He now has the unenviable task of firstly uniting this divided nation. Lupakanlah nomor satu, lupakanlah nomor dua. Marilah kita kembali kepada Indonesia yang satu, Indonesia Raya. Kita kuat karena bersatu. Kita bersatu karena kita kuat. Please,